you are Locked On Rays, your daily Tampa Bay Rays podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, my name is Kevin Weiss. I'm Ulysses Sombrano. It's your boy, Evan Klosky. And we are the host of the Locked On Rays podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Thank you for making us your very first listen every day. Be sure to check out and subscribe to our YouTube channel at Locked On Rays. You can also follow us on social media, Twitter and Instagram at Locked On Rays. And email us anytime, LockedOnRays at gmail.com. This will be a mailbag episode with Evan. We'll also have him on Friday's show as well, but uh, let's go ahead and get it out of the way. The let's let's flush that disgusting seven-one loss to the Marlins, shall we? Uh, luckily, I guess uh, Zach Eflin's going to be okay after the MRI, but that was uh, not a way to follow up after what was a solid, positive, reinforcing victory the night before. I mean. I just I just don't even know because when they win a game, it's not like they do it convincingly. Like I can't I can't be overly excited when you win a game four to one. I can't be overly excited when you win a game three nothing. It is you are playing. You should have listened world. to our Wednesday episode then because we were finding all the positives from that. No, I mean w, like aside from the base running. It, it, yeah, I mean, look, there's there's the one thing that. Generally speaking, outside of um, yesterday's game, which was a throwaway, it's unfortunate to have it. It happens. Uh, you know, Alcantara is one of the game's best pitchers. He hasn't looked like that this year, but you know he can be that type of guy. You know, it's only fitting that the 2022 version of him came out while we're seeing the 2022 version of the lineup for the past month. But – you know, that, that game was DOA anyway with Eflin stinking it up, which is unfortunate considering how good he is at home, as you mentioned, the knee injury. But, yeah, I mean, they've, they've hit better recently. Just they don't, they don't produce with people on base. I mean, you know, they, like they're getting seven, eight, nine hits per game, and that's great. But, you know, the, the power has been sucked dry a little bit. They, they don't get on base at all in the right times. There's a bunch of redundancy in this lineup. And they need a game where they can just blow someone out. And again, going back to last year, they had no ability to just truck stick someone. It's always, hey, Glass now. Hey, McClanahan. Hey, Eflin. Put us on your back. All right? Give up one run. We'll yeah. get to three. Like, that's so unreasonable. And the, it, the lineup is just not good enough. And we can go through discussions of what needs to change. But it, with the deadline coming, I, I would hope that they're not stubborn on some people, even though I'm sure they want to see it through. That is fair. And we will dive more into that on Friday's episode. But we'll change gears here and – hammer out a couple of mailbag questions. This first one from Harrison Hickenbotham. Say that five times fast. Hickenbotham, Hickenbotham, right here. Damn it. Yeah, no, we're not, we're not doing that here. Um, <laughs> had very good things to say about Evan Klosky and the episodes that you do on Locked on Rays. Won't get into all that. We'll get to a statement here. Um, he says, and this harkens back to the All-Star game. My question is during the All-Star game, the first run of the game, came from Yandy Diaz's home run in the second inning. I may be hypersensitive, but to me, it seems that Joe Davis and John Smoltz really didn't get very excited about it. It seems that he hit it, and then the inning was over quickly. And after that, they just moved on with the game. Really didn't see a lot of replays, et cetera, of that home run. To contrast that, when Gurriel hit the home run that was later called foul, it felt like Joe Davis and John Smoltz were tripping all over each other in their excitement. Even in the hype videos before and during the game, Randy had some FaceTime, but no Yandi, barely Wander, and I don't think I saw Shane at all. Just feels to me that we are a small market team, and they kind of want to keep it that way, even though we are one of the best teams in baseball. 
All right. Uh, look, the handling of Shane and Wander with the telecast was one thing, um, which was a miscommunication. Shane and Wanda ran, ran out too early and the TV truck didn't catch up to them. And then instead of someone trying to stop them or, you know, Joe Davis recognizing them, he just skipped over them. Uh, why, again, why he didn't reference them later on was, was a bit of a miscue by him, I think. Um, and, and that wasn't right. Now let's talk about all the, the things that you said. Uh, first off, Yanni Diaz hit a home run in the second inning. They were doing an interview with Corbin Carroll at the time. So they're having a conversation just like us. And then, oh, there's a home run. It's just – it's um, it's an awkward spot to hit it. I, I, they did a replay. Um, but ultimately, it was so early in the game and nothing was kind of on the line yet. Uh, they, You know, I don't think it was – I don't think they did Yanni Diaz wrong. Uh, his highlights were all over Twitter. I thought they gave Randy Rosarena tons of praise on the catch that he made. I thought they drooled more over that than the Yandi home run. I thought, you know, he was properly uh, given his kudos there, especially the, even the single. They were talking about how this guy could do everything. Shane McClanahan was not active. He wasn't pitching. He was on the IL at the time. They're not going to give him face time. You know, there were, there were plenty of other IL Ray. Uh, there were plenty of there are plenty of other IL players in the game who got no face time. You just recognized the Ray that wasn't recognized. So, so again, is this a case? Sorry, is this a case of Ray's fans being like Tiger Woods and Michael Jordan fishing for bulletin board material when it really isn't there? I think I think it's one of those scenarios where you take a legitimate gripe and then you start nitpicking. Exactly. You start carving out things that aren't really there. Like just because they messed up this doesn't mean that if they have a conspiracy theory against you. Right. Like they screwed up. Sometimes people just screw up. And that was a mess up out of the gates. And uh, I wish they would have addressed it. They didn't. It was it was a, a mistake. But. All the other things, and I, you know, I agree that during the telecast, they they should really do the game. I think that's the biggest thing that your complaint is probably about is that the All Star Game, they're not really doing a play by play of the game anymore. It's who are they talking to this inning? What's this about? Everything's planned ahead of time, and when Wander Franco gets inserted into the game, that should be announced to everybody. I don't know why it wasn't. But it just felt like they didn't give enough crap about the game and gave more crap about the things that they had planned surrounding the players they had pre-chosen. So, you know, I, I agree with everything you're saying, Evan. However, I will I will raise this thing that did bother me, which I every time that somebody hits a home run in any game, what does the camera do? The camera pans to the, the – fans or whatever they he rounds the bases he touches home plate and then the next shot is the celebration in the dugout uh, not only in valley sports but this happens in every broadcast you got to you you give the guy that just hit a home run the 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 celebration five seconds in the dugout and him getting high fives like that is completely a a normal thing it's not going above and beyond anything they even like the the uh, harrison says they did this for the fake home run uh for the game it was later in the game it meant more than it just did and they weren't doing an interview that inning as i said it, it the they're not they're not covering the all-star game they're covering the all-star players can you do the can you do the interview still with the images showing uh you know people high-fiving yandy diaz in the in the, in the dugout yeah, they, I mean, they did that slow motion replay afterwards. He had the big smile on his face. They talked about, um, I, I believe they talked about him about to be a dad. Um, I mean, I, I was able to save some of that video. So I know it's there. I mean, he wasn't prominently displayed. And again, it came in an inning where they had something planned. Now, you might be able to argue, okay, why isn't one of the Rays players being talked to? Well, unfortunately, um, 
the way that it is, it, it, it shouldn't be, but the way that it is, is that you have three raised players who aren't, uh, who don't speak predominantly English. So in, on an English broadcast, they're not going to put the microphone on them during an inning like they maybe have done in the pregame show, which was something where you saw Randy Rosarena go to a desk and you had pool holes and Ortiz and, or not Ortiz, Yonder Alonso mm -hmm. communicating uh, or Pedro Martinez, that was the other one, communicating throughout uh, the, the interview in English and in Spanish. So that's just also the nature of that beast. We can talk about whether that's fair or unfair, but that's just the reality. Uh, I think we need Tom Brenneman to explain how he would handle that home run call. <laughs> too soon. Always too soon. <laughs> too soon. All right. Uh, thank you for the question there. We have more to get to. But first, we have to tell you this. Uh, Ibotta gives you cash back on hundreds of grocery items from produce to personal care to pantry goods so you can make sure you're beating inflation no matter what you are purchasing. Either link your loyalty account or upload your receipt after you shop and get your cash back. It is that easy. Uh, did you know that the average eBody user earns $120 per year? That could cover the cost of an entire shipping or shopping trip, maybe a shipping trip too. Uh, or you could use your cash back to buy that flight you've been eyeing, that game you're dying to go to, or the fancy dinner that you've been craving. Uh, other apps give you points that don't really amount to much, but with the Bada, you get real cash back that you can cash out to your bank account, PayPal, or gift cards. You can earn uh, cash back on hundreds of online brands and real uh, retailers too when you start with Ibotta. Uh, that includes Lowe's, Macy's, Sephora, Best Buy, and so much more. So right now, Ibotta, I-B-O-T-T-A, is offering our listeners $5 just for trying Ibotta by using code MLB when you register. So use code MLB when you register. All right. Uh, this next mailbag question comes from Ryan Kendall. He wants to touch on the Randy and Wander beef. Or, uh, we want to make of that. He says... Uh, Randy Rosarena went uh, live on Instagram recently, and although I don't speak Spanish, I used Google Translate to ask, are you and Wander still fighting? Once he read the comment, he seemed pretty heated and went on a 10-ish minute rant before ending the live stream altogether. I didn't understand much of what he was saying outside of hearing the words Wander, no problema, and me mejor amigo many times throughout his rant. Someone in the comments translated that he was basically saying that the media is fabricating all of his problems with Wander, and they're actually friends. I'm not sure if he got so upset because he's just tired of hearing it or if everything we have been hearing about their fights is a lie, and maybe the no high five after Wander's home run is a weird coincidence, question mark. Either way... It seems like he is proactively trying to squash the beef and their relationship for the future is looking up. Yeah, I mean, as I said, I, I've mentioned this before. It, it seems like everything is hunky-dory over there and, and has been for a while. Um, you know, I, I understand why it was a big deal when it happened. Players get into fights all the time. We rarely hear about this. Obviously, this had more. Wander did not get suspended because he has a fight with Randy. It, it was it was bigger than that. And it was much longer than that. So that was maybe the tipping point. But that was not the reason why he was reprimanded. For the organization to go to the level that they did, they had to have tried a multitude of different routes before reaching that one. Mark Topkin has touched on that a little bit in the past. And um, I just, I really think that the Wander Randy thing is over with. And obviously both are playing horrifically right now, which makes that narrative linger. But, you know, I don't think one has anything to do with the other it, it you know maybe wander struggles could 
be part of the suspension and mentally dealing with everything. You know, I don't know, but I didn't see the Instagram video. I'm not somebody that likes to guess when they're telling me one thing and I'm trying to figure out a different narration of what they're telling me. Uh, I can do that when I see it myself and I understand before and after vibes, but at least everything I've seen, the, you know, the squash, the, the, the beef has been squashed, whether they're best friends or not, I don't know. Um, but, but they're definitely have been friendly. Um, and I, Outside of just being depressed that you lose all the time, I, I don't think that that's much of an issue moving forward, at least until something new pops up, if it ever pops up. But for now, at least. Yeah. I I wish I would have um, seen this as Instagram Live because I know that you both took Spanish and I know that you both uh, are, as millennials, as millennials um, we know that Google Translate uh, can be a folly uh avenue to trust mm -hmm. uh so you know also there's context clues there's there's cultural awareness that you know somebody might seem like they're going in a rant but they might just be talking normally i mean kevin has known me for now yes. 13 years and i can just like feel it might seem like i'm upset or ranting when i'm that's just my way of talking uh so there's there's a lot that goes yeah. in to this, uh, I think, and, and and like Evan kind of insinuated, you know, I think diving too deep into this one instance might just garner more rumors without an actual backup evidence to support it. So just tread tread lightly here. I mean, uh, I, like Evan said, I it seems like everything is over. It seems like everything is is okay. At least um, civility uh, in front of the cameras has has reigned supreme lately which is good. It's just now can they move on from that and then give, give us production on the field, yeah. which has not happened this whole month. I would uh, like to see that Instagram live video. And there's gotta be somebody out there who had the time and the wherewithal to record that thing. I mean, if yes. Randy and other players are going on Instagram live, somebody had to rip that feed some way or, or somehow oh, or some shape. I will. If somebody has that, if somebody from the locked on race uh, fandom has that, Give us a DM, send it to us. I will dedicate my free time yeah. to translate it and and, and 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 so that we can all kind of understand. It. Yeah. We don't need Manny Navarro here. We got Ulysses Sembrano. <laughs> We're all set. Yeah, the question isn't, are Wander and Randy fighting? The question is, who's playing worse, Randy or Wander? That's, you know, the big story of mine uh, over the last week or so. Seriously. Um, all right. Yes. Yeah, it's bad. Um, all right, this last question, uh, fun one from Rhodes Conover, an MLB trade proposal, and he Ooh. prefaces it with this. I know this is a bit absurd of an idea, but with the team performing the way it is and in uh, need of some top-end pitching and having a surplus of offensive talent, could you see this deal working and he has a screen grab of MLB trade rumors where the Rays would trade Jonathan Aranda and Brandon Lowe. Wow. Wow. I can't wow. believe it. And we just talked about the disrespect. The 2019 All-Star game has reemerged. <laughs> I'm the worst. Um, and the Rays would receive Josh Hader and Blake Snell. So Aranda and Lowe for Hader and Snell. I mean, that is, I mean, that's that where you got to take, you gotta take the, the look. So let me explain this. And that's why you always take it with a grain of salt. Even when I post them, I say, this is something that I, you know, I think in my head, that website, the baseball trade simulator is not useful for rentals. What the site is telling you is how much they are worth based on their deal. So because they are rentals, they're telling you that I would not overpay for said player because he's gone potentially in two months. So you have to view this in a very black and white, no emotions, no understanding of the context of, of baseball. Just 
what is my future value? Why would I trade a person under contract who's highly touted for six, seven years for this really good player who is up in a half a year, less than that? So just understand that going into the, the, the simulator. It's really bad for judging rental. Why is Brandon Lau valued that highly? It's because of his career numbers and he's under contract for $8.5 million next year. And I believe there's a club option for another year if you want to go that route. Having said that, it does not account for the last two years where Brandon Lau has objectively been bad. Now we think that one day he'll snap out of it, but until it happens, you know, He's he's a, a, a he's a little bit better than what Joey Gallo was before the Yankees had to ship him out. The only difference is, you know, Gallo didn't really have much in the deal left, and the Yankees are the Yankees and will eat money if they have to. The Rays will not eat money. So ignore the Brandon Lau monetary value. It's uh it's it's way too high. That is not how the the GMs view him. Um Aranda, I would probably say, gets a little bit of a boost, though his defensive prowess might hurt him. To get Snell or Hater, you would have to give up one top 100 prospect, uh, at, at least. So, you know, you can probably get Josh Hader for Kyle Manzardo. You know? Question Could you get Josh Hader? for Jonathan Aranda and Brandon Lau, taking Blake Snell out of the no. equation entirely. I don't I don't Aranda think so. and Lau would not be enough to get a rental of Josh Hader. I don't think so. I mean, you're you got to I mean, Jonathan I've said this before. I love Jonathan Aranda. He's probably got to be a first baseman. His defense is not going to stick. Not to mention the Padres have one of the best defensive second basemen in the league. Um so you're trading the rental of Josh Hader for essentially your future DH who might only play against righties. So that's what I mean about Aranda. Like if I can take Harold Ramirez and Jonathan Aranda and make them one player, that's a, that's one hell of a DH. Yeah. But to burn two roster spots on a righty and a lefty specialist, right. that makes it tough to say that both have no defensive impact essentially makes it tough. So I don't think that deal is going to fly. I think it's, I think a top 100 prospect is a fair ask from the Padres with maybe a throw in lower guy. Um, But uh, for Snell, I mean, Snell would probably garner a, a really significant problem. I mean, Snell is having a hell of a year and that doesn't even add to the fact that I don't think the Rays want Blake Snell back, and I don't think Blake Snell wants to go back to the Rays. There's so the you don't. I think you'd have no problem, but I, you know, I don't really think that the yeah. I I think that marriage is come and gone, and is, is and and to be fair, I don't think that Blake Snell really fits what they need in this. And I say this in the sense of he is still going to go five to six innings, and you're gonna have to go to your bullpen seven, eight, nine. You know, that's. A, I mean, Blake Snell is fantastic. He's he's amazing, as we know. And he's um, playoff tested. Playoff yep. tested. But he does not go deep into games. I, I don't think I, – has he ever gone in the eighth inning? I looked this up. I, I know he does not have a, a ninth inning under his belt. And I think he's – I don't think he's ever been the eighth inning. And if he has, maybe once, twice. Okay, let, let, me, let me put it to you this way. Would you rather have on this roster today – Josh Hader or Blake Snell. You can take one or the other. Josh Hader. Okay. A hundred percent. They, they, they need no a problem. high leverage. Do, I love Pete, but there are a lot of questions with Pete. Injury, cold weather. You know, there's a realistic chance that Pete Fairbanks is only going to pitch for you in Tropicana Field come playoff time. That they're going to save him for the trop. He'll pitch his two games, and then they're going to go on the road, and he won't pitch. Yep. But that's a realistic thing that could happen in October. So – you need a high leverage arm and you know, you, you're essentially getting a, a Jake Diekman upgrade, right? You know, I mean, you got that look twice. Now 
it all depends on like who you, I would have to look at like the lineups, right? Like if they're projecting, like they're going to face maybe the blue Jays. Well, getting a lefty doesn't really help against that righty heavy lineup against some other teams, um, you know, that are significantly lefty focused. Maybe so, but that's just it in the vacuum uh, between those two. I, for me, I, I don't really understand, and maybe we're going to touch on this uh, tomorrow. I, they need starting pitching depth. They don't need a top end starter. Okay. Like if Zach Eflin, you know, hypothetical, this isn't as Kevin led with this about the Zach Eflin news. If Zach Eflin was out for the year, um, it might be a different story here. But even so, you're going into the playoffs. You are going to throw Tyler Glass now. You're going to throw Shane McClanahan one and two in some order, right? So you need to get, and by the way, Zach Eflin has deserved the right to be third in the in the postseason rotation. Yeah. So that means you need a fourth. You need a guy who's going to make one start in the postseason. But you more, the more important thing is you need a guy who is durable and can stop this bullpen day usage, bulk day usage, which is dragging down this team every fifth day. And they were able to skip that because of the two days off um, this week. But it's, it's about depth. That's why when you hear Lance Lynn, it makes sense because he doesn't have to be a top of the rotation guy. He's got to be a four for the Rays. Right. Please plug you into our, our, our rota- bump Taj to being our fifth inning guy. And in the postseason, he can be our bulk guy. And we'll throw him maybe one time through the order. But that's um, – I think that this yeah. – narrative we'll, of they we'll bring uh, mike messina out of retirement we'll get it situated. yeah I, I think that they, they need hitting i don't know if anyone's watched but they need they, hitting. they need kind of hitting? a lot right now you know who's um, hitting jonathan aran is hitting in triple okay but here's he, the thing though what he wants, for, it's happening every every trade proposal that i think myself ulysses the listeners out there put forth it involves jonathan aranda because he's blocked a team that has josh Hader does not want jonathan aranda for josh Hader. They want Kyle Manzardo. They want Junior Caminero. They want Curtis Mead. Some combination. Uh, yeah, you're not. Getting, you're if not getting a Scott top. Harlow, then yeah, we'll take Jonathan Aranda, maybe. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They're not getting a top fifty guy for a, a a relief pitching rental who isn't like the number one guy, right? Like Chapman was traded for Glaber Torres back in the day, but Chapman was widely considered the best closer in the league, right? Hater, he got traded last year and look look at how far south he went when he got moved. Like you know, the the Padres might have to accept whatever they can get, which might be, you know, a fringe 100, but I think asking for a top 100 would be their starting point in the discussion, at least up until the deadline day where they got to maybe compromise. But for me, what I really hope from the Rays in the deadline uh to tease ahead is I don't think they should be making deals about this year only. I think they need to be currently and forward thinking. How do we unclutter our issues? We need to get rid of some pieces to allow other pieces to come up, to bring in some pieces, and then maybe it's a rental piece that comes in, and then next year we're able to reshuffle up and reassess. But they're stuck in this position of, uh, I don't want to release Harold Ramirez, but he's not helping us. I don't want to do anything with Brandon Lau, but, you know, he's been inconsistent for two years. I don't want to, you know, Taylor Wall. I don't want to sit sit down Josh Lowe, even though he hasn't hit anything since like two months ago. Uh, Mm -hmm. I don't want to bring Jonathan Aranda because, oh, uh, you know, his glove is horrible. But even though you're not losing games for defense, you're losing games because you can't put the damn ball on on, on, the play. Yeah, and my my point even to that, I I agree, you know, when when you're hitting like crap, you need to to shake it up somehow. But at the same point, Aranda doesn't solve everything either. Like, he just doesn't. There's not a savior. And and they they can't bring up Aranda, like – they need to bring up Aranda, and just like everybody this year who got a free pass on last year, they need to give him the I, the notion that, like, you're a guy you're going to play all but once a week and chill. Like, but he doesn't have the security. Everybody else does. Everyone's got the longest leash in the world on this team. They're trying 
they're trying so desperately to, to cling on to the five weeks of success. And we all were on it. Everyone. I don't blame us for falling in love with it, right? Yeah. They were the best offense in the world and they were crushing records. But it's yeah. very clear that five to six weeks drown it does not drown out the two years that we pretty much have minus six weeks of a sample size on a lot of these guys. And you have to ride it out with Wander. You have to ride it out with Randy. But there are some other guys. If you're not producing, I need someone who can. But they want to stay the course. What goes up must come down. What goes down must come up. And they're thinking in there that we are so bad that it's going to turn around, that it can't possibly get any worse. And the unemotional side of me agrees. And the emotional side of me says, we'll see. Sure. We'll see. Yes. Uh, and we have more with Evan on Friday's episode. So stay tuned for that.